Welcome back, everybody, to the Home Tour Podcast. It's me again, Hunter Mitchell, joined once again by my co-host, Kate Harris. How are we doing today? Um, turbulent, uh, interesting weekend for Aggie Sports, mm-hmm. um, and across the SEC in general, to be honest with you. Um, I know we said last weekend, that or last week, that, that there wasn't much shift in our power rankings, but I feel like this week's power rankings... It's crazy. Yeah, specifically in one division, I think the S, the the West. I think is our. Mm. I think our streak of of us aligning in the West is going to. Oh, be bro- it's going to. It's going to be gonna broken. Be broken. I have. A, I have a feeling. I, th- our East could align, possibly. Possibly. But, but yeah, I have a feeling this West is going to be. I, I I don't know. I feel like we're going to go into different little tangents about, you know, who's right, who's wrong. Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll go ahead. And we'll we'll break down. We'll break down the East. Yeah. We'll start start at the bottom. So we start with Vanderbilt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See? That, that's, yeah, starting with Vanderbilt. I mean, no rise. They looked. I mean, they looked like Vanderbilt against yeah. Wake Forest. Uh, you know, I I will say, Will Shepard did get me some pretty good fantasy points with okay. those two touchdowns. Okay, there you go. There so, you go. And he that that wasn't enough for them to rise on your rankings. Will Shepard helping you? No, out? no. no. <laughs> I mean, you put Will Shepard on any other team, maybe. But maybe like, I don't know. Like Vanderbilt's Vanderbilt. You know. Two yeah. and one. I mean, if they make a bowl game, that's a season success. So seven in the West or the East is not. It's about right. For yeah, them. it's it's, it's to be expected. <laughs> yeah. So your number six, Florida. I got the Florida Gators sitting there at six. Uh, just still not impressed by them after you know their week one loss to Utah, and yeah, I I just I think that uh, that team is the sixth best team in the East. I I. I jumped Missouri over them. Wow. Yeah, who do you have in your six? I I actually have Missouri there. Okay. Okay. I think that Missouri did not look I mean, week one obviously they they took care of business and they did fine, but last week ugh, I mean a nineteen to twenty three victory over Middle Tennessee State. Yeah. Who Alabama went and absolutely slaughtered yeah. the week prior. Ooh, that's not... I mean, you you have a 10-7 lead at halftime. It, it just... it just I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it really doesn't... It doesn't look good to me. I mean, you got outpassed. You know, only by 10 yards, but you still got outpassed. Um, you know, Luther Burden got you some good fantasy points. Um, he always does. He's always <laughs> contributing. I mean, it's the only weapon. Yeah, so... so I, I feel like I made a mistake. So, one, I said that I had jumped Missouri over Florida. That's not the case. I had Missouri over Florida after week two. And I read my week two rather than my week three power rankings. Oh. So, I did have Florida there at the six, or Missouri there at the six and Florida yeah. at seven. Yeah, that, that middle Tennessee performance was, was terrible. Yeah, that, that just did not look good. I mean, to get some – and, like, a Missouri defense, that was pretty high in as well mm-hmm. um, that I figured would be kind of one of the tops in the East, you know. I mean, only 19 points, but then again, that offense, you know, who's going to complement that? Uh, is it going to be Brady Cook? Is it going to be, you know, Luther Burden? And then who else is going to step up in that spot? I mean, Cody Schrader had 84 yards rushing. It's pretty good. But, like, all in all, I mean, obviously execution-wise – just didn't get it done offensively. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had to score a touchdown in the fourth quarter to even take the lead. Yeah, exactly. And so it, you know, just did not not a very good, not not a performance that I'm willing to put anyone else like, like, I'm not willing to put them above anybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think that you know, other than Vanderbilt, M- Missouri has looked definitely mm-hmm. like the sixth best team throughout the season. Yeah, and then uh, so then who's your next spot? Yeah, so the, we're 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 done with six and five, right? We got that established as Missouri, Florida, or do you have Florida? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have, so I have Florida. Florida in yeah. my five. So we got Vanderbilt. I have Vanderbilt. Then I have Missouri, and then and I have Florida. Florida. Is yeah. that who we're on Florida, or are we moving on to? Fit. I mean, we can talk about Florida. I mean, I don't yeah, think, I think Florida hasn't really changed that. No, much. I don't think so either. They played McNeese. Yeah, and I mean, they they did what they were supposed to do, right? But I mean, even then, Graham Mertz against McNeese, and I, I mean, I know it's McNeese who's definitely like pulled, but I mean, you know, only yeah. only 193 passing yards against McNeese, but you know, they 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 ran the ball 
extremely well. That's what we've been wanting to see, right? Exactly. That's what we kind of said we wanted from Florida was yeah. to see them really establish that run game. Um, Granted, it's against McNeese, but still, I mean, I mean it's a good you'd st- like to see it get established. It's a good step up. I mean, let's see. Uh, Montreal Johnson, 119 yards, averages averaged eight yards per carry with two touchdowns. I mean, Trevor Etienne got the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trayon Webb. I mean, a lot of really good rushing performances there. Uh, Graham Mertz actually had a positive rushing performance. What? I know. No way. I know. Wow. How many yards did he rush for? Eight. Okay. So it's positive. <laughs> he, he's still he's still probably oh, in the and negatives a, and for the season. And a rushing touchdown. What? Graham uh, Mertz scored a rushing touchdown. So so I mean yeah, Ford Ford took care of business, but didn't really like shine in my opinion. Um, and then no. I think we probably have the same four spot as well, right? Um, you know, I don't know if we're going to. Who's your four spot? Kentucky. No, my four spots. South Carolina. Yeah, I I I interchanged those two. Uh, Reason. Man, I just Kentucky was not impressive this past week. Uh, you know, they beat Eastern Kentucky and the FCS team twenty eight seventeen for one, um, and the halftime score was seven to seven. Yeah, it was just kind of a. It was a good performance from Devin Leary at two hundred ninety nine yards passing, four touchdowns, and just a pick. But you just like to see more from their offense. One mm-hmm. and also, I mean, I, I guess the I mean the defense giving up seventeen is probably not the best either to an FCS school. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that, and that's kind of like how I am with South Carolina too. In my force, like in in my spot, mm-hmm. is that you know Furman. Now, mind you, Furman is probably one of the better FCS programs you could probably play. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think they're number six in their in the FCS rankings, predicted to win the SoCon, which is one of the toughest FCS conferences. So. You know, all things considered, it's better than than probably Eastern Kentucky. But I mean, Furman kind of gave South Carolina a little bit, a little run for their money there. Um, obviously, South Carolina then went and you know blew them out by twenty six. But you know, twenty one giving up twenty one points to FCS school. You know, forty seven the offense. You know, you see a little more from the offense as well. Spencer Rattler only had two incompletions the whole game, which is wow. what you would like to see from Spencer Rattler. Um, you know, to carry and Joiner only had 42 rushing yards. Yeah, that was their leading rusher. Yeah, which that worries you if you're not rushing against an FCS school. Yeah, it does, definitely. And I still think uh, their offense just looked a little bit better than what we saw from Kentucky. Um, yeah. Just the court, maybe, I wouldn't say maybe the quarterback play because, I mean, Devin Leary had a great game, but mm-hmm. I just feel like Rattler was, you know, more efficient. He didn't throw a pick like Leary did. Um he threw for less yardage, but like you said, only a couple incompletions. I feel like you know that was a overall he had a better game than what Leary did had this past weekend. Hmm. Yeah, and I, and I can get that. I mean, we always talk about how like some of these teams feel kind of interchangeable, and that's kind of I I mean I wouldn't be too upset swapping Kentucky and South Carolina there. I just feel like the main thing for me with South Carolina is that I I just that offensive line freaks me out, man. That freaks me out. I just don't know how you're going to survive anywhere in the SEC with an offense that they're off at the line. It's just paper mache. Yeah, you're not because you're going to have to be able to run the ball in the SEC, and 42 yards isn't going to cut it at all. And so um, it starts with the offensive line play. So if they if they don't have that, they're not going to have a rushing game, and it's not going to be pretty for them in the SEC. So then I assume that your number three is South Carolina and then yes. mine is Kentucky. Yes. Okay. So then who is your number two? Yeah, I'm still keeping Tennessee there. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, that was a not a great performance either against another FCS school. Uh, these FCS schools were just giving the SEC East some trouble, it felt like, this weekend. Austin P and Tennessee were tied at six for a little while. Yeah. I think Austin P even had the lead, like, pretty late in, this, in the first half. Um, obviously, Tennessee ended up pulling away and winning the game. But still, you'd like to see, I mean, for, for a team that, wants to try and compete uh at the top of georgia uh you'd like to see a better game than what they showed this past weekend yeah i'm with you on that one i know i had tennessee above georgia in my last ranking Mm -hmm. but they went out showed out took care of business again um you know finished off ball state yeah blew them out 42 42 3 or 45 3 you know beat my 42 so i mean yeah after Tennessee's performance against 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 Austin P, 
Yeah, I, I, I you decided. I, yeah, you decided. I, I you, them down. Tennessee spot in the one spot was just a weak thing. Yeah, that was that was. I mean, that was always going to be tentative with Georgia as the right. team below them. So, like, yeah, I. Yeah, the Bulldogs are back where they belong. Yeah, yeah. I I, I figured it wouldn't be long until Georgia's back on top. To be honest right. with you, but yeah, well, I mean, we were both at home. Like, you know, Tennessee's tied with Austin. Yeah, e, they were, like, we were scoreboard watching while we were going through our depression here in the a <laughs> Miami game. We we're like, well, hey, at least we're not yeah. losing to Austin P. <laughs> yeah, so I mean that like the, like tied with that and just how like how we know Georgia is. That's why like you know in in my spot they've got. Yeah, I've got Georgia back on top and Tennessee at two. So for my rankings, I've got uh, Vanderbilt, Missouri, Florida, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia. I got Vanderbilt, Florida, Missouri, Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Now the fun part. The wild, wild west. W- absolutely, positively wild. I'm so intrigued for what <laughs> you're going to do be... here. Um, <sighs> this is going to be a little bit a little bit new breakdown for us because I feel like it's going to be so scattered. This is... Because every team just feels like... It really feels like any team can beat any team in this division. Tell me I'm wrong. Like, No, I, I, like I think, agree. I think the worst team in my power rankings can go out and beat the best team in my power rankings. My thing with, my thing is with... Because with, like even Alabama, like Alabama... I mean, we... we I like to say we called it. We just, both said Jalen Milrow does not look oh, like... No. Starting quarterback for the Alabama Crimson Tide. No, and, and I'm not getting a jersey of his. <laughs> that was the only thing that hurt me about that game, really, was that they didn't win by 14 and a half. Oh, man. Didn't win by 14 and a half. They didn't even win. Didn't win, yeah. They couldn't even get within single digits. So, yeah, I mean, we, we both we both hit the nail on the head there, which I'm sure is not yeah. a very hot take. That, I mean, no. Jalen Milrow does not look very good. He didn't um, look good last year, so I'm and, just going and by there experience. Was, so many just bonehead just plays that mm-hmm. like some of the inter- like one of the interceptions he threw was just like absolutely absurd. Yeah, I was, was like right to the Texas defender. I was not happy with Jalen Milrow. Yeah, he did not he did not look very good. And I think we called that and said like if he can step up and perform, Alabama could be a winning team. But mm-hmm. I think you know this may be a hot take. I think Bama right now with how they're looking with Jalen Milrow is like a nine and three team. N- no, I don't think that's a hot take at all. Really? I would, actually, I would be surprised if Bama doesn't drop two games in the SEC this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You ready to see what we got going here? Yeah, I want you to start. <laughs> okay, I will. Seven, I got Arkansas. Wow. The Razorbacks. Man, talk about a stinker of a game they played <laughs> against Kent State. Uh, they only led uh, 14-6 to six at the half, ended up winning 28-6. to six. Stink I say a stinker, the defense played really, really well. Which they did their job. Surprising. They got a, they got a pick six to add it, to add, so it's the offense didn't go out there and score twenty eight points. Um it just felt like early Arkansas could not establish anything. A quick three and out to start the game. Uh only got one first down the next drive. Uh and yeah, it just felt like they were struggling to get going. And then they finally, you know, got a couple touchdowns, uh one to end the first quarter, one close to the end of the second. Um, but I feel like the second half was a little bit better. Um, the defense was still solid throughout, but the offense still kind of you know struggled a little bit. Yeah, I mean, pitch the shutout. I mean, they were without Rocket Sanders. Um, they he's were. out with injury, and mm-hmm. he's going to be out with injury this week too against BYU. Yeah, um, that's an so, intriguing game. Yeah, I mean, now it's a Big Twelve SEC matchup. Yeah, which is. I, Weird. Yeah, I wrote about that in my. Uh, <laughs> they they're they're included in one of my top ten games that I'm writing about right now, and yeah, it's it's crazy to yeah. think that that's a power five matchup now. Yeah, super strange, but I mean that's just the that's just the the reality of the nature of college. I football think we right find now. out a decent amount about both those teams this week after that game. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. They did not look very solid. I mean, again, defense pinched a shutout um, in second half. You know, only give it two field goals. But, yeah, the offense, you expect more from K.J. Jefferson. You know, mm-hmm. only 136 passing yards. I mean, two touchdowns. But, I mean, A.J. Green looked good running the ball, 82 yards, average 5.5. Um, again, without Rocket Sanders. But, yeah, not not the greatest performance. No, just very subpar. And um, in a week where uh, I like feel like the West just struggled against every team that they played, Besides LSU, they rolled. Um, I don't know. This one just kind of felt like the worst, the worst performance out of them for me. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I bounce back and forth um, between my 7 and my 6. And... You know, I, I, you know, I, I think, I think, you, I think the more we talk about it, I think the more you convince me. I, I, I think, I think I'm gonna go with Arkansas in my really? seven too. Yeah, I think the more and more I thought about it, the more and more. I mean, this is this is such a difficult division to rank. It really is. <laughs> this is such a difficult division to rank. It is because, like, I mean, I guess, like, what are we ranking? Here? I guess we've we've talked about we we're kind of ranking on like a week to week basis. Yeah. Rather than like, I guess who can beat who maybe yeah and so i i think that's why i have them in here in this spot um because there's a team that i'll mention later on that i feel like probably lose loses to this arkansas team now but they performed better last week and you know that's just why i put put arkansas there yeah so then your number six spot is yeah hold up sorry yeah that is i pretty sure i put that down as auburn yeah okay yeah, oh the, wow okay we are staying consistent the, yes i did have the yeah. auburn tigers yeah i mean I, cal has not been a good football team no i mean it's 14 a, points it's a <laughs> come on come on guys it's a it's a road it, you know it's a road game too so you gotta give <laughs> in, them that in the pac 12 so, so hostile right <laughs> unless they're playing oregon like I mean, the yeah. Pac-12, Eric Colorado now. Shoot, that's yeah. that's a hostile environment Peyton, going there. Peyton Thorne had 94 passing yards. Woof. Um, yeah, real again. Like you said, kind of like you said about Arkansas, it's kind of a real stinker. Mm-hmm. I mean, 230 total yards for Auburn. Mm. That's not good. That's not good. Not at good. all. I mean. That gives you a little bit of confidence if you're an Aggie fan for next week. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a pretty pitiful pitiful performance offensively against uh, that Cal wow. team. That yeah, I just I would have liked to have seen a lot more from Auburn uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah I agree. Cal's not <laughs> yeah, there's not, not really like, much else to say here. Cal is not a good football team. They haven't been for a very long time. I get that they're power five, but come on now. But Auburn. I mean, there's despair, like discrepancy. And Cal, Cal would go, would end up in seventh place in the West. Yeah. And like there's or eighth place if they were to play yeah. in all those yeah. teams. I don't think Cal would, they would probably win maybe one. Just so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's I, not a good team. Yeah. I think so. I think 14 10 victory. You know, if, if maybe they win like 28 10, you know, 35 14, maybe it looks a little different in our rankings, mm-hmm. but 14 10 victory against a, 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 a pretty poor Cal school. I will um, say this, though Auburn can figure it out. I mean, it is still just week two, and I yeah. think they can figure it out and be really good heading down towards the end of the season. Um, luckily, A&M catches them in week, in week four. Um, I think that's you know actually a really good thing for A and M because they're still figuring out a new head coach, new offense coordinator, everything like that. But I think they have potential to do some damage towards the end of the season, maybe towards the end of the, especially getting to that Iron Bowl game. Yeah, I mean uh, that just ties in how we feel about the whole West is that, exactly. that everyone can kind of shore up and 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 right the ship. Mm-hmm. So then your your five spot Mississippi State. Okay. Yes, Mississippi State. They had a good. Good performance against Arizona, I would say. I don't know how good this Arizona team's going to be. They've not been good that, or that great in the past, but I think you know Mississippi State went out there and they they played well and they uh, did what they needed to do. And I think their win was a little bit more impressive than Auburn's. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. We're we're staying on track. Are we? We're Are you on Mississippi track? State on five? I'm also Mississippi State on okay. five. Um, wow. I, I have a we, scary feeling we have the same West. If we get the same West, that is so – we are – that for how wild this week has been, if we get the same West, yeah. that is insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, granted Mississippi State did have to win that game in overtime. Yeah. But, but I just – I think I, think I feel Arizona, like Arizona is a better team than Cal. Exactly. Arizona is a better team than what people give them for. I mean, the, Mississippi State came up with four interceptions in that game. Man. That's crazy. Yeah, against Jaden Delora, who's not not a bad quarterback. I mean, like, I mean, he also threw for three hundred forty two yards as well. But, I mean, Jaquavius Marks is is going off. One hundred twenty three yards on the ground. I'm playing against him in fantasy this week, and that Are is you? not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Braxton's got him, and I'm not excited. Hmm. Um, Will Rogers had a decent game, only incomplete, only four incompletions, three touchdowns. 
162 yards. But yeah, it looked like they, man, they relied on their their run game a lot. 24 carries for Jacquavius Marks. So, yeah, I mean Mississippi State looked. I mean Mississippi Mississippi State looks like a really solid football team. I mean, mm-hmm. we'll really see what they're made of um, this weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, going up against LSU. You know, they get yeah. LSU I'm super excited home. for that game. I think I think there is. A, there is upset chance written all over it. Yeah. Um, cause I think this Mississippi state team is, I mean, they're, they've been impressive in the fact that their head coach passed away, you know, yeah. eight months ago or however long it was mm-hmm. nine months ago. They're impressive in that fact is that they've been able to turn it around this quickly. And yeah, yeah I, I think they have a real shot this weekend. Yeah. And, and that's what, so even though you know they're in that that five spot, I mean, I think Mississippi State has the potential to be a really good team. I just think we haven't seen enough mm-hmm. of them to know what they're like without air raid. You know, southeastern Louisiana. I think Arizona's our first real taste of what they're like, and I think we'll really get to know what they're about against LSU. Mm-hmm. Number ready for number four? Yeah, Texas A and M. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're staying on strong. Track. We're on track. Okay. Yeah. Uh. You know, obviously, we'll talk a little bit more about their performance uh, in our football podcast, but yeah, just it's not what you wanted to see from A and M this past weekend. No. The defense was you know, exploited, just yeah, absolutely, absolutely ran through. Um, Tyler Van Dyke really lived oh up to Tyler Van gosh. Dimes. Man, I'm I'm never gonna make fun of him trademarking that name ever again. He he looked like ACC he, freshman of the of the year. Yep, he he did he did look Tyler very Van good. Dykes. Uh, just the A and M DBs weren't getting it done. They didn't seem to have a, the D line couldn't bring much pressure on Van Dyke much the whole game. The offensive line wasn't blocking too great. Uh, just yeah, just overall not a, not a good performance from the Aggies. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think that's why they they fell one spot in my rankings. Man, I mean, gave up 374 passing yards with five touchdowns is Ugh. that's nuts. Yeah, didn't look good defensively. Offense some uh, on occasion it kind of looked like they were like had their heads cut off. Um and yeah, no, I I, I agree. I think that it's not what you wanted to see if you were an Aggie fan. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you're playing against a Miami team that I think people are going to sleep on a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think they're better than what may, people may think they are. Definitely a lot better than last year. There's no yeah, doubt about no, that. Yeah, no, I think they're not a 5 and 7 team anymore, no. but yeah, that that is pretty disappointing if you're an Aggie and I I don't think you can put them ahead of any of the three teams we have left. No, nah, I don't think so either. Um namely because of the team that jumped them, the three spot I, for me is Ole Miss. It yeah, Tulane was missing their quarterback. It's still a ranked win, and um, they, a ranked win that was you no know, a double digit win. So yeah, streak's broken. Really, man, you really jumped them. You you're really impressed by that Tulane win, or are you just disimpressed by this team? Bit of both. I think wow. in my three spot, I have the Alabama Crimson Tide. Wow. I think that. It's exactly as we as the prophecies foretold, the podcast prophecies. The podcast prophecies is that we wanted to see them play a really like an actually good team, uh-huh. and they did, and they didn't look good. They didn't. No. Uh, yeah. I I guess I see where you're coming from there, and putting him there. I. Mm. I hate saying this, but I think that <laughs> Texas team is really good. No, no, they, and they are. But I mean, but most of the time when you say like if the team is good, and they're also playing Alabama, you're if, like, okay, it's going to be like a real, like it's going to be a real slugfest. If Ole Miss does the same thing to Tulane with Michael Pratt at quarterback, I think I probably put them above Alabama. That's fair. I just couldn't. I just can't do it. Based off co- coming in with a backup quarterback, you they probably I think it was like a game time decision. They probably had they didn't know for sure whether Pratt was going to be playing or not throughout the whole week. And so, yeah, I just think that Tulane team is a lot a lot different than than they are than with without Pratt than they are with him. So then is uh, is Alabama your your? Oh yeah, spot? there there's no way they were sticking to my one after after they did what they did. Mm. Not even just because I'm mad at them, just because they they didn't look like the best team in the SEC West this week. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you having them at three, I think it's 
I think it's a blessing for them that I still have them at two. Uh, That's because and and but I have the LSU Tigers in my two spot. You're lying. I have LSU in my two spot. No way. I do. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. All right. <laughs> I told you. I told you. I'm not holding any punches this week. Oh my gosh. You're 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 all in on Lane Kiffin. I don't say that. I I. Wow. I like I hate to give praise to Lane Kiffin. But you know, LSU still all they've done is blow out an FCS school, you know, good for you, seventy two points, that's awesome. But all they've done is blow an FCS school and get the brakes blown off them by Florida State. Yeah. And we and this is kind of going off of what we ranked them like preseason too. You know, we ranked them high and I still think they're a really, really good football team. And we'll really see how they do against Mississippi State. But I think the team that has looked the best in the West and took care of business and has a ranked win is Ole Miss. Yeah. Uh, there is no arguing that, that, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, Ole Miss, they have the best resume so far. They do. And, I mean, and, and, and yeah, you know, knock the snot out of Mercer week one. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, expect it. 17, 20, you know, 17 point win, 37, 20 against Tulane. Mm-hmm. You know, don't I mean? Don't get it twisted. Kai Horton, Tulane's backup quarterback, has experience playing. He, Michael Pratt went down before last season, and he had to step in and win games. So it's not like it's just any like schmuck off the bench. Um, it's not no. You know, Jackson Dart had a lot of really really clutch moments that game. You know, pass for two sixty seven. That fourth quarter of theirs was really good. Yeah, and and I think Jackson Dart has really looked like a really solid quarterback. I mean, he showed. He showed signs of it last year. You know, had really, really good moments. I think he's uh, continued that. But, yeah, I mean, I, I just think that, I think resume-wise, I think Ole Miss has the best resume in, in the West. And if you have the best resume in the West right now, I think you deserve to be number one. I mean, they have a rank win, and they took care of business week one, massacring FCS school. Yeah, no, I can't disagree with you. Uh, I I see where you're coming from. I just, I still think uh, that uh, LSU and Bama just are are over them for me. Man, when we started the West ranking, I thought I really thought maybe we would we would align there, but yeah, no. I guess I wasn't thinking maybe you you were that high on Ole Miss, but yeah, I, I get it's yeah. it, it's high on Ole Miss and not high on everyone else. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. No, so, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of change up after this week. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, I mean, start start conference play. Yeah, LSU Mississippi State. That's a big game. Tennessee, uh, Tennessee versus uh, Florida. Florida. Yeah. That, that's a sneaky game. Sneaky maybe. game for the Volunteers, maybe. And then I think South Carolina Georgia has potential to be a pretty good one. We'll see. <sighs> that Georgia D line though, that's scary. For it South is, Carolina. but South Carolina always seems to give Georgia trouble. I don't know what it is. Well, we'll see. But I'm excited. And, yeah, we'll see where we're at next week. See where we're at. But for that, that's all for this week. Thank you for listening to the Home Tour Podcast. This has been our SEC Power wink, Wankings? Power Wankings? Grant's back. <laughs> oh, man. Grant reference. <laughs> this has been our SEC Power Rankings for week three. Um, going into week three, uh, I'm Hunter Mitchell. I'm Kate Ayers. And we will catch you next time.